Greetings, viewers. You're watching English News Broadcast live from our headquarters in Asmara. It's 10.30 p.m., Monday, September 27. Presenting your daily updates, I'm the reporter, Miram Johannes, wishing all followers of the Christian faith a happy holiday. Here's a rundown of the top stories we're covering. Message delivered by Foreign Minister Osman Saleh at the 72nd session of the UNGA. Mescal holiday celebrated nationwide. Floods left by tropical storm Diane May. Five point eight magnitude earthquake hits island Crete of Greece. And now we proceed to the details for the local news. Foreign Minister Osman Saleh delivered a message on behalf of the President of the State of Eritrea, His Excellency Mr. Issa Asaforki, at the 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly. At the pre-recorded message, Minister Osman Saleh indicated that, quote-unquote, these are crucial and in many respects unprecedented times in which our global community is facing triple challenges of enormous gravity. First, the COVID-19 pandemic, whose deadly violence continues unabated in many places. Second, spiraling climate change that threatens our very survival. And third, growing risks of dangerous international rivalry and commotion rooted on dynamic changes in the global balance of power. The minister further highlighted that, quote unquote, these grave challenges have accentuated some basic truths. They have amplified the flow and inadequacies of conventional wisdom on certain economic models. They have exposed structural deficiencies in the parameters of global and domestic governance, hitherto portrayed as universal and unassailable, both in terms of their universal validity and applicability. Foreign Minister Osman Saleh also stated that, at the international level, heavy-handed policies of containment and encirclement to forestall healthy strategic competition and mutual progress based on symmetric, equitable and rules-based international system has and is soaking a climate of confrontation and instability with all the risks that this may entail in the period ahead. Mescal, which commemorates the finding of the True Cross, was celebrated today, 27th September, at St. Mary's Church within the confines of COVID-19 guidelines. At the colorful celebrations that were broadcast live on Airy TV, His Reverend Abune Kerlos, 5th Patriarch of Eritrea's Orthodox Tohadu Church, led prayers followed by religious hymns around the Damera Torch. Sunday school youths presented religious songs depicting the event. At the occasion, Memhirsim Ombayene, gave a briefing on the historical background of the Mescal holiday. His Reverend Abunek Erlos, 5th Patriarch of Eritrea's Orthodox Tawahadu Church, and Mr. Fisahaye Haile, Governor of the Central Region, jointly lit the bonfire, or Damera, at the premises of St. Mary's Church. The Ministry of Tourism issued a statement on 27 September World Tourism Day underlining the significance of the enhanced participation of every citizen in promoting Eritrea's tourism potentials in the tourism sector, noting that this year's theme for tourism is Tourism for Inclusive Growth, the statement called for strengthening organizational capacity and integrated effort for responsible and sustainable tourism, pointing out the tourism Day is being celebrated for the 41st time at an international level and for the 27th time at a national level, the statement highlighted the tourism's industry unique ability to make sure that nobody is left behind. Noting also the COVID-19 pandemic has had a massive social and economic impact in the tourism sector globally, the statement issued by the Ministry of Tourism stated that the government and people of Eritrea have been implementing varied development undertakings for a thriving tourism sector even during the pandemic. 
The statement finally underscored the need for integrated effort in promoting the tourism sector as it plays a significant role in the economic development of the country. September 27, World Tourism Day 2021, was observed at a national level in the Ansaba and Southern Red Sea regions under the theme Tourism for Inclusive Growth. In the commemorative event that was held in Karen Ansaba region, a number of owners of social service provision institutions, heads of the Ministry of Tourism branches, representatives of the municipality of Karen, and other stakeholders took part. Participants conducted extensive discussion on strengthening the Ansaba Region Tourism Service Provision Association. Speaking at the event, the chairman of the association, Mr. Flores Wisperhane, stating the tourism services the member institutions provide and the employment opportunities they create, expressed conviction that the association will strengthen effort in promoting tourism potentials. Mr. Fisai Hap, the head of the Tourism Resources Research and Supervision Branch at the Ministry of Tourism Branch in Ansaba Region, on his part stated that the government and government the people in the government of Eritrea are working on promoting Eritrea's tourism potentials and making the country a tourist destination. The Director General of the Department of Tourism in Ansaba region, Mr. Salem Ali Salem, on his part, commending the effort the Regional Association of the Tourism Service Rendering Institutions conducted during the area of the COVID-19, expressed conviction that the department will exert for effort to elevate challenges the association is facing. In a similar commemorative event held in Asib, Southern Red Sea region, Mr. Abdullah Hizam from the Department of Tourism in the region highlighted the significance of the tourism sector in the overall development task and underlined the collective effort needed to be exerted so as to take Eritrea's tourism sector to a higher level of standard. Mr. Biniam Dama, chairperson of the Regional Tourism Services Provision Association, called for organization of training programs aimed at enhancing the tourism service member institutions in the Southern Red Sea region provide. Coming up after our short break is your international news. Stay with us. Welcome back. Floods left by Tropical Storm Dan Mu inundated areas across the province in central Vietnam today, three days after the storm made landfall. Authorities dispatched rescue teams to send food aid to stranded residents in some of the affected areas. Dan Mu made landfall in Vietnam on Friday. At least 600 houses have been damaged and 2,500 hectares of crop destroyed by the floods in the province. Also in other parts of the world, a cyclone packing strong winds and rains has barreled into India's east coast as, ten of, as tens of thousands of people in three states were evacuated to shelters. Heavy rains and strong winds were reported along the coast on Sunday evening as the tropical storm over the Bay of Bengal began making landfall barely four months after another cyclone hit the region, leaving destruction in its wake. Cloud bands had touched the coastal regions, indicating Cyclone Gulab had begun to make landfall, according to the National Disaster Response Force Chief Rescue Teams of Disaster Relief Operations personnel had been deployed across the entire region. A strong earthquake measuring 5.8 magnitude shook Greece's largest island, Crete, today, authorities said, and one person was killed when a church dorm collapsed. CCTV caught the moment that quake hit the western Crete town of Castelli, where a car shook side to side in a driveway next to a house. 
The quake which set people out of their homes and public buildings and caused considerable damage was described by Greek seismologist Ephthemios Lekas as a thunderbolt with strong aftershocks. A man died when the dome of the church caved in during renovation works, police officials said. Civil Protection Authority said. Nine people were injured in the quake, which damaged many buildings. The tremor prompted many people in Crete's main city, Heraklion, to rush outdoors. School children were told to leave their class class classrooms, gathering in schoolyards and town squares. The Athens Geodynamic Institute said the quake's magnitude reached 5.8 and its epicenter was 23 kilometers northwest of Avri in southeastern Crete at a depth of 10 kilometers. That was the last of our news. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. Again, happy holidays.